Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, my story, uh, uh, the, the Swedish story, is this, the story about uh, about impacts of policies, uh, targets, and uh, legislation, but also a story uh, about how the importance of cooperation and dialogue uh, within, with, uh, with among politicians, with the civil society, and the business. Uh, only one year ago, the Swedish Parliament uh, passed our climate law, uh, setting out a policy framework uh, with the explicit goal to f to make Sweden carbon neutral by the year, at latest by the year 2045. And as we all know, uh, politics is often guided by short-term perspectives and electoral mandates and the uh, competing nature of politics at times work against the long-term approach, and the, in, th that is so important that also Paul from Unilever put up on the table that we need long-term uh, approaches and frameworks. So how did we in Sweden then manage to get a bold, ambitious and visionary climate law in place? And even more important, the question how we get there in practice, implementing the law achieving our goal uh, of a carbon neutral uh, society in less than a generation that's very ambitious and our story is that we uh, we will build around a couple of themes first of all we believe in uh, open and inclusive processes that's very important so we uh, invited a broad range of stakeholders to take part in the design of our climate law and we worked across um, political parties seeking common ground, and the climate laws also passed with broad bipartisan support. And this will hopefully ensure that the long-term perspective that we so much need stays there. Uh, you will, of course, need space for a healthy debate about what works and what doesn't work, and what policies we need to be put in place. And different governments, of course, may opt for different policy measures, although the fundamental uh, policy direction will remain given the broad agreement that it's based on. Going carbon neutral uh, will transform our society. It has to transform, uh, transform our society. And unless uh, we unite around that vision, we will not succeed. Uh, moving to the second chapter, we have forged partnership with the business community. With our climate law, we set a legal framework providing a predictable environment. Business will bring dynamics to the process. And in April uh, this year, a, a total of nine business and industry associations, and they were ranging from steel industry, uh, cement mining industry, to retail associations, they presented their own roadmaps to what they call fossil-free competitiveness. So they are competing among its, uh, each other to be m the most ambitious ones. And they all recognize that to, re uh, that to remain uh, competitive, they have to move towards sub uh, substantially reducing their carbon footprint. And early adapters will be the winners, while those who, who drag their feet behind, they will lose out. And yet another step, uh, leaders of 38 large Nordic export companies representing 70, as much as 17% of the total Nordic GDP met in a round table dialogue, a, a Nordic Talanoa dialogue with Nordic ministers presenting their journey to a low carbon economy. Their key message to our political leaders was that the predictable and ambitious green framework will speed up their own journey. And third, uh, with the climate law in place, there is, of course, a lot of homework to, to be done. And our climate law provides that every new elected uh, government must present their own plans and actions for moving towards the, the carbon neutral goal. And our gov government is obliged to report an outcome and results annually to the parliament. S so this is the transparent uh, process uh, and legislation that we have. And in short, we are now setting the stage to institutionalize the transition to a low carbon uh, economy. That is putting uh, the framework in in practice. And institutions, they, they may move slowly like turtles, but they are steadfast and act as a counterweight to the sometime day-to-day -day politics, which is very important. And our challenge now is to develop a public management culture based on an approach of sus su sustainability 
taken on board not only traditional economic and social aspect, but as much as environmental dimensions. And with that is a, a real transition of our economies based on the, the, the environment and the, and the climate action. That process will have to make space for creative thinking, of course, looking for new sustainable solutions. To this end, and we have um, taken initiatives to bring different disciplines together, setting up uh, competing teams composed of business and academic researchers to address specific challenges. And it's through this mixture of cooperation and competition that we have we need, uh, that we can create the dynamic processes. And my last message, uh, and this is also very important, is to encourage a debate on personal responsible behavior and how change could come through collective and political actions. The premise is one of the both, uh, of both necessary and of hope. And we can build a better society um, while changing our patterns, not only of production, but also of consumption. The root is not to blame on individuals, of course, but, our offer, uh, but, no, no, but to offer ways forward for people to take responsibility for the broader good and for caring for each other, saving our planet, and take responsibil uh, responsibility for the future generations. Thank you very much.